Hi guys, this is Kwame, bringing you more data set insights. Oftentimes with SQL, you will find yourself reusing a certain code frequently. If this code is very long and contains complex functions and a complex structure, just imagine how frustrating it would be to write it over and over again every time you require it. What if there was a way to write this code just once and then store it away for future use? Well, that's the main purpose of stored procedures in SQL. A stored procedure is a pre-written SQL code that you can save so that the code can be reused repeatedly by just writing a simple line of code. In other words, if you have an SQL query that you write often, it's a good idea to save it as a stored procedure and then just call it to execute it. This way, you don't have to always rewrite the code whenever you need it. Let me show you how to create, execute, modify, and delete a stored procedure in SQL. Using the bicycle store database that I have used for other previous exercises on this channel, I have written a query that generates a report showing the first and last names for the customers that have ever shopped at our stores and the total sales they have generated for the company. As you can see, this is a fairly complex query containing Three tables, one, two, three, indirect joins connecting the three tables, and a function. Needless to say, it's not a query that I would want to rewrite every time a manager requests an updated version of the report. So what I am going to do instead is write the query once, store it as a stored procedure in the database, and then call and execute it every time I need it. Writing a stored procedure is a very straightforward process. All you have to do is first, let the SQL engine know that you want to create a stored procedure. And you do that by writing create procedure. Next, give the procedure a name without any spaces. So in my case, I am going to call my stored procedure customer sales. Next, write as on a new line. And then finally, write your query on a new line. And that should be it. This is how you write a stored procedure. Type create procedure, then give your procedure a name without any spaces, write as, and then finally write your query. So if I hit execute, my procedure has been completed successfully. Now, your new stored procedure is stored in your database folder, in your database, and in a folder called programmability. In that folder, it is stored in the stored procedures folder. These are all the procedures that I have created in the past. Our new procedure is not shown here. And that's because it sometimes takes a few seconds for it to appear. So what we're gonna do now is just simply refresh our database and then wait for a few seconds. And then there it is. We have our stored procedure. Executing a procedure is much easier than writing it. All you have to do is write, execute, and then the name of the procedure you want to execute, which in our case is customer sales. And that should be it. So if I hit execute, there it is, the report that we had earlier. Much easier than writing that long, fairly complicated query, isn't it? If I want to modify the stored procedure to have the query also show the total number of bikes in units purchased by each customer, I can do that by going to our 
storage procedure, customer sales, right clicking it, and then clicking modify. So on this screen, all I want to be concerned with is the query. So we want to add a new field to the select line and the field is a function for the total number of units. So I want to type sum quantity and I want to call this field total quantity. That should be it. So after we have updated our storage procedure, all we have to do is just simply hit execute and it should be updated successfully. So once it is updated, I should be able to execute the storage procedure and this time have a report that also shows the total number of units purchased by each customer. So once again, when executing a storage procedure, all you have to do is simply type execute and then the name of the storage procedure that you want to execute customer sales in our case. So once I hit execute, there it is the report. So notice that in addition to the first name of each customer, last name of each customer and the total sales generated by each customer, we also have a new field showing the total number of units that each customer purchased from our company. That's it. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, right? If I want to delete the stored procedure, all I have to do is find the stored procedure in our stored procedures folder, right click on it, and then press delete. And that's it. In this exercise, you learned how to create a storage procedure, how to execute a storage procedure, how to modify a storage procedure, and how to delete a storage procedure. In a future video, I am going to show you how to create a storage procedure with parameters. If you have any questions regarding this lesson, just let me know in the comments below.